Okay, this is, first of all, I got to get this right. There's so much interest in this topic of how to get a great dog. Um, I hadn't really planned on it being that interesting to people, but it seems to be. So I want to make sure I'm doing it right. So this isn't going to be number four like I said it was going to be. This is going to be 3.5. In other words, what I've decided to do, I'm going to go back and you know when you decide to explain something, you have in your head what to say, but then sometimes you forget parts of it. So this is going back and inserting the parts I forgot. So number one was pedigree. Well, there's more to pedigree than pedigree. All the good dogs have it. The great dogs really have it. But coupled in with pedigree is the breeder. The good breeders are different than just the regular breeders. If you could see, I have videos of Mary Howley, for instance, up in Wisconsin. Her, her yard is like a, a, this giant playpen for puppies, and it's just incredible. Mary Tatum, the same thing. I mean, they have slippery slides, and these puppies are so stimulated and so agile and and acquainted with their own lives and their own selves by the time they're seven weeks old people that get these puppies are getting something special and then you go to some other place i was i was at a a, a well-known breeder and it was just a bunch of rabbit hutches with with puppies up in there that they put food in every every twice a day or three times a day and that was it no people no nothing so um it's a it's probably a whole video of what the value is, the importance of what happens before they go home to their families. That first seven weeks from when they're born, the nurturing, the, the care, the handling, the, it's huge. And you almost never hear about it, the value of the first seven weeks. So I'm putting that, mixing that in with pedigree and the breeders that are the ones that have the good pedigrees. So when you're searching for a puppy, please put a little more thought into it. Oh, this is the Sire of the Month Club, and this is the, oh, I'd love to be in that clique. I better get a puppy from, from them. Don't do it that way. Do some research. Get into discussions with knowledgeable people about pedigrees and how they overlap each other and how they're going to give you the best possible puppy, healthy and strong and active and and acclimated to many parts of life. So I'd like to add that to P1. P1? The first P. I don't know, that doesn't sound right. Uh, anyway, to pedigree. So, number two was philosophy. And, I don't know, I, I overlooked some important parts of the philosophy. But, my main thing is, how are you going to be as a trainer? But, some examples of that. One of the people that I think has helped me the most in defining my own philosophy is... Jim Wagner up in, um, in, in Chicago. And uh, we did a video together. He was pretty much the center of attraction and I did the filming. But it, uh, it is my philosophy of training. And I think it's worth watching just to see what a, comp what a philosophy is, what it looks like. And it's very, very crucial and very important. So that would be an add-on to philosophy. The third part is plan. This is big. And I'm going to give you two examples, one of which is my own example. One which I had in my mind to mention when I did plan 
uh, was Secretariat. You know, this was, at least I read the book and I saw the movie, about a lady that owned a horse and a trainer that wanted to win the Triple Crown. And it was a fantastic story about not giving up, not quitting, about knowing where you want to go to, and then not letting anything come in your way. And this was millions of dollars in entire estates. It was a huge thing, more than most of us are used to. So that's one example of knowing the end result and not letting any stone be unturned. The other is my own story, my own first dog. You know, I was a uh, marine photographer. I photographed sailboat races in San Francisco and in Seattle. And um, my passion was training retrievers along with photography. So I had those two things, but both of them seemed to occur on weekends. And I finally made the decision that I wanted to train dogs. That's what I liked to do. The, and I, I just found myself doing it all the time. So I got a puppy and it was very well bred. I did nothing but train that dog. And in the beginning of the year in February when trials started back up from the winter layoff, uh, this puppy, whose name was Sunday Hawkeye, had six derby points. And in the spring, before she turned two years old, I had a chance to run 14 derbies. Well, I wanted to be High Point Derby Dog. Was I able to do it? I don't know. I, I was. I'd never done it before. This was my first trial dog. And I had an international scout with a four-cylinder stick shift motor and a, a dog crate and a little pile of bumpers and a shotgun. And I took off. And I ran those 14 trials. And Sonny got seven first and six seconds. Uh, in those trials, which means she was hammering almost every bird. It was, um, it was a, it was wonderful to be a part of. But it seems to me now that I've been around a long time, very similar to other dogs that you could c call great, great dogs, because it involves the same thing. Almost every great dog has the same story, and that is. Whoever had them did nothing but try to make them great. They didn't have a whole bunch of dogs. They had that dog. They trained that dog and dreamed about it at night and woke up wondering what training should be like that day. No stone unturned. And that's what it takes. One of the things that permeates every part of having a great dog is having a dog and a person that is totally dedicated to being great. It's just like Secretariat. And, um, and men, uh, every great dog I've ever known, they all have that same component. Unrelenting effort to be great. So I hope I've said that well enough, but that particular component is part of every aspect of training and making a great dog. So that is, um, thank you for the, all the great comments that you've left. I've really appreciated it and it gives me ideas on how to go forward. So anyway, that's um, P3.5 and um, I'm, I'm working on the next one. I won't tell you what it is yet, but we're getting, we're dangerously close to it. So have a great day. Mm -hmm.